what are your expectations? Well, I think the big thing here is to see how the share price does and is there really demand um, for the first listing of a, a Africa stock on a big exchange. So we'll watch that. They just went live. Uh, as you said, trading started at 1450. And I think where this share price goes, we'll see, you know, how much the market um, believes in or, or doesn't in Jamia, but also African e-commerce overall. Jake, in the last 24 hours, I have seen more adjectives and qualifiers raised for Jumia, and I'm sure you can understand that's natural. One of them being that it is the first major African-focused, venture-funded tech company to go public on a major global exchange. You have been following this story for quite a while. Tell us what you think is important to know about Jumia at this point and the IPO. <laughs> Well, I just published a story at TechCrunch that's, uh, you know, a thousand word kind of deep dive on, on everything Jumia. Um, I think one thing that, you know, Jumia is a bit like Amazon in that um, it brings its own kind of controversy, people who like it, who don't like it. But I think it's, it's fair to say that Jumia in many ways has carved out and legitimized e-commerce in Africa. Um, you know, they've, they've pretty much built the, the sector in, in many respects as a greenfield industry and they deserve some credit for that um the things to watch i think are now you know what what is this ipo and all the venture capital all about it's about whether or not these guys can actually get in the black and turn a profit um jamia has done well at building revenue um they've reached a hundred million dollar mark uh for the last couple years but they've also taken huge losses which isn't totally unusual if you look at the e-commerce landscape so now the, the question is whether or not um, Jamia can turn a profit and ROI for all these investors. And as I wrote in the story, there's more, I think, riding on that than just um, Jamia's profitability and, you know, how much money their shareholders make. I spoke to a, an African e-commerce exec who spoke only on background, who told me that um, a lot of the industry is on hold right now in terms of investment and business moves for African e-commerce because so many people are waiting to see how this Jumia IPO goes. Now, Jake, you have highlighted Jumia as qualified as being the one to carve out and of course legitimize e-commerce in Africa. That brings to mind, why is there at all this debate about whether or not Jumia is an African company or a European company based in Africa? coming down on either side, but I tried to represent kind of uh, the, the different arguments. To the debate that Jumia is not an African company, they're incorporated in Germany. Um, their founders, or at least their two CEOs, are French. Um, the management is mixed um, African and expat, so you have uh, some people from outside the continent, but then you have other uh, country managers who are from the continent. To the argument that Jumia is definitely an African startup, uh, they're also incorporated in Nigeria. They operate exclusively in Africa. Um, they hire and employ 5,000 people on the continent. They pay taxes in Africa. Uh, and their, their total focus is e-commerce in Africa. So those are kind of both sides. Um, and, you know, people will continue to debate this, I'm sure. Now, Jake, from initially considering a, a, a range between selling at $13 per share to $16 per share, we eventually saw Jumia come to the mid-range of 14.5. Uh, from the information that you have been exposed to, or investors or e-commerce execs that you have spoken to, have you had conversations around proper pricing based on valuations, maybe, Jake? Well, there's been a lot of vetting that's gone into this. I know Jumia... Um, did their initial filing on March 12th, and they've been going back and forth with the SEC, and they've updated their prospectus, and they've consulted with their investors, which you know include Goldman Sachs and Axon and MPN. So I think they're confident they priced it right. But you know, Christy, like all these um, these listings, this is what's exciting about it. Ultimately, the market will decide, right? So for all the experts and everything they put into determining what's right. Um, the real verdict will be how this share does today and over the coming weeks. So it'll be exciting to watch.
exciting to watch. I'll, I'll just latch on that, Jake. I mean, we have Jumia and I, it's reported from uh, uh, Market Guardians to the public. He said it isn't profitable at the moment, reported a loss in 2018, riding on investors' trust on the fact that Africa does, in actual fact, provide a large market for, uh, for its business. Now, when we look at the figures, Jake, it's not looking exactly yeah. bright when you want to make projections based on the reality of the fact that Nigeria, Jumia's uh, largest market, actually only does 1% of e-commerce in its trading daily. Well, you know, it's a kind of a, a glass half full, a glass half empty scenario. Some people could say, well, um, if you look at the fact that Nigeria is digitizing, that more people are becoming accustomed to online commerce, digital payments, smartphone penetration, that maybe it, it says a lot that Jumia has been able to carve out um, you know, with, with Nigeria as its base, the kind of revenues it has, even with the losses it has. Um, on the other side, you know, maybe, um, you know, Africa is not ready for e-commerce and it, it's going to take longer. You know, I think we'll watch that over the coming weeks. I think, a coming year. I think one thing that's interesting to watch here, though, is is what Jumia's IPO and what happens to them means for African e-commerce at large. So it's an interesting field. You've already seen uh, a couple players, big players, drop out. So you had Deal Day that shut down. Um, you had Conga, which is still operating, but was bought in a distressed acquisition. Um, and then you have the big players. So Amazon does limited um, shipping to Africa. They haven't entered in full, but they have brought AWS, their fulfillment services, into Africa. Alibaba has done limited. They haven't quite entered the market. But yesterday, uh, you had DHL enter Africa with its own e-commerce platform. So there's going to be a lot of competition. Um, we'll see how it plays out in terms of partnerships. Jake, a lot of competition and definitely a lot to look out for. We'll keep our eyes closed to that market and space. Thank you for sharing your time and thoughts with us on the show.